The Celtics have debatably the best young duo in the league. The Raptors have the GM God. Those are just two of 12 teams with the brightest future broken down in this video. Stay tuned to find out whose team is best built for the next decade. Before continuing, over three quarters of my audience isn't subscribed, so please subscribe. Also hit thumbs up for the beastly YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into this. The Toronto Raptors wouldn't instantly pop into your brain if I asked you which NBA teams have the brightest future, but it's an organization with the best front office in the league. President and Chairman Masai Ujiri and General Manager Bobby Webster put this team in the ideal position to succeed year in, year out. The Raps just missed the playoffs for the first time in nearly a decade, but it's not like they were stuck in the middle last year or tried to be. At the 2021 trade deadline, they traded away their most efficient player at the time in Norman Powell, who was having a breakout year. Masai realized this wasn't their season and that it was time to fade for Cade. It turned out Toronto was only losing charm for Barnes, but they still got a potential gem nonetheless. Scotty's easily a player who could enter the league and make an all-defensive team. Along with his defense, Barnes showed off sound bucket-getting potential all throughout college and into summer league. Scotty's seemingly built for the spotlight with his on-court enthusiasm and off-court flair, so he should fit well with Toronto's other young pieces. OG Ananobi just turned 24, but is already a lockdown defender. Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet are still 27, plus Gary Trent Jr. is still 22. Factoring in the 21-year-old Precious Achua, and that's a decent mesh of young talent for Toronto. In 2021, Colin Sexton and Darius Garland combined to average 41.7 points and 10.5 assists. Combine the Cavs' rising backcourt with the soon-to-be sophomore wing Isaac Okoro and the number three overall pick Evan Mobley, and the Cavs have a solid cast of up-and-coming talent. Within the next few years, the Cavs have a decent shot at developing into a top Eastern Conference seed. Shockingly, it's an organization that hasn't made the playoffs without LeBron since the year I was born in 1998. The Boston Celtics were injury prone all year, but the biggest blow came right before the playoffs. It, it was announced Jalen Brown was out for the season with a torn ligament in his left wrist. With JB down, the C's postseason chances were flushed down the toilet. Jason Tatum has MVP award-winning potential in 2022, but his individual efforts, of course, couldn't carry the C's over the top against the powerhouse Nets. But JT this past season alone became one of the game's most dangerous offensive weapons. He had 51 games of at least 20 points, 20 games of at least 30 plus points, four games of dropping 40, two games of posting 50, and one franchise record tying 60 piece in a comeback win against the Spurs. I talked about Brown's defense in my last video, but offensively, he's a prime LeBron James-esque slasher. Additionally, when Jalen finds a jump shooting rhythm, he's pretty much unguardable. Brad Stevens asked Jalen to pull his offense out past the three-point arc, which saw the Georgia native raise his efficiency to a new career high of 39.7%. Brown also shot career highs from two-point range, 48.4%, and from the free-throw line, 76.4%, while turning in personal bests in scoring and dimes. From an opponent's perspective, you have to pick your poison with Boston's two beastly wings. Slowing down slash stopping both Tatum and Brown is a near impossibility. Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram are both under the age of 25, and they were both efficient 24 plus point per game scores in 2021. As those two develop and the Pels find the right head coach plus acquire the proper assortment of talent, New Orleans will be a top seed in the West. The Slovenian sensation Luka Doncic and the unicorn Kristaps Porzingis have been known as one of the better up-and-coming duos for a few years now. While Luka's averaged 30 in the last two playoffs, Porzingis has struggled to stay healthy and recently complained that Doncic doesn't pass to him enough. Of course, the talent of the 4-1-2 punch is good enough to lead Dallas back to the winning they experienced in the early 2010s. However, it's an error that could go to waste if Luka and Kristaps can't get along. Luka's been a willing passer and historically productive, so it's hard to argue that he should be giving it up more, but given their space and pace abilities in the modern NBA, 
I think these two figure it out over the next few years. They have no choice with KP's untradeable $30 million cap hit until 2023. John Morant just established himself as one of the best players at the deepest position in basketball. He had the help of the 25-year-old from Toronto in Dylan Brooks. Brooks quietly dropped 17 per night last year. Also, Dylan's a valuable isolation defender, which was most valuable for Memphis in the play-in tournament and first round series against Utah. Considering they didn't have Jaron Jackson Jr., it's impressive that the young Grizz took a game off the number one seeded Jazz. Don't forget, Memphis also has imposing youngins like Desmond Bain and Brandon Clark. Jalen Green lived up to the hype in Summer League and with the Rockets parting ways with John Wall, the 19-year-old recent number two overall pick will have all the minutes he needs to develop. Green opted to play in the G League instead of playing in college, which should benefit him. Given he's played pro ball, that should give him a more fluid learning curve than other rookies. Jalen joins a solid cast of rising gems for Houston. Cleveland's number 30 draft pick from 2019, Kevin Porter Jr., was acquired in January and averaged 17 for the rest of the year. KPJ also had a game when he became the youngest player ever to drop 50 points and 10 dimes. Chris Paul's aging, but with how he played in the 2021 playoffs, the man seems like he has another half decade left. Even if that doesn't happen, the Phoenix Suns have Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, Mikael Bridges, and Cam Johnson, five West champions still under the age of 25, who are already proficient contributors. Phoenix couldn't win their first ring in 2021, but the 2020s decade overall should be a successful one for fans in the Valley. Shea Gilgis Alexander just got an extension which entails he'll be the face of the Thunder organization for years to come. While SGA and Lou Gwentz Dort doubling his scoring in year two both showed solid progression, they're far from the reason why the Thunder have one of the brightest futures. OKC's acquired an insane 36 picks over the next seven years. The Golden State Warriors are probably regretting the decision to draft James Wiseman over LaMelo Ball in 2020. That allowed the man who once took Kwame Brown in Michael Jordan to swoop in and make the greatest draft pick he's ever made by far. The Hornets won a measly 23 games in 2019-20, but drafting Melo helped increase that win total by 10 and get the Hornets into the play-in tournament. In terms of the players Melo had next to him last year, Miles Bridges posted a career best in field goal and three-point percentage, the sophomore PJ Washington took a decent step forward, and still at 27, Terry Rozier led the team in scoring by averaging 20 but there's even more young talent on its way after Charlotte took James Booknight and Kai Jones. Some great draft picks. Keldon Johnson, DeJounte Murray, Jakob Pertl, Derek White, and Lonnie Walker. If those five can progress over the next few years, the Spurs could be back in the postseason sooner than you think. GM RC Buford has built championship contenders in the past, and he's got an impressive assortment of building blocks to do it again. RJ Barrett can be really damn good, and that's the primary reason I had to fit the Knicks into this video. Julius Randle hasn't turned 27 yet, Mitchell Robinson's only going into his fourth year, and I'm also high on Emmanuel quickly. I think he can develop into something. As a sophomore, Barrett just became the eighth player in NBA history to reach 2,000 points, 500 rebounds, and 300 assists before turning 21. The other seven are Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, Tracy McGrady, Carmelo Anthony, LeBron James, Luka Doncic, and Kevin Durant. RJ improved across the board in year two, so his progression could keep the Knicks towards the top of the standings over the next decade. Out of all these 12 teams I've broken down, I'll choose two, both in the short and long term. Considering they all have a ton of talent, it's extremely tough to decide. In terms of the next 10 years, I'm going with OKC and Toronto. It's inevitable a few of those first rounders will become franchise players for OKC. Toronto just signed Masai for the long term, which could lead to success in both the short and long term. But in terms of the next five years, I'm gonna go with the Boston Celtics and Phoenix Suns. Those are just my picks though. Let me know yours in the comments section. Hope you have a great one. D-Flow signing off.